Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in, and if it's your first time, I appreciate you clicking on my channel. Um, so the last two reviews, if you've seen them, were honest, but I felt like they were a little negative. Today I'd like to talk about something that I enjoy, that I, I, I think is positive, uh, and that would be home automation. The kind of core of what we're trying to accomplish here with the smart home. Uh, yeah, you can have all the devices and you can sit there on your phone and you know, turn things on, turn things off. But I think a, what makes a smart home, a smart home is the automations. So today I wanna to talk to you about my top five that help me with my everyday life. The, the automations that are kind of essential to getting through the day and that aren't just gimmicky. I, I do have some of those and they're flashy and they're cool, but at the, end, at the end of the day, they serve really no purpose. So let's get to them. So this first automation was born out of complete laziness kind of one of those light a fire under a butt to get it done and it was the laundry before this automation exists uh, the problem we had was the buzzer would go off and we would just sit there sometimes for a couple hours on end or there had been a couple of times where it was left overnight and we had to rewash it so to combat that i wanted to make an automation in the house that um annoyed us <laughs> essentially so what it does is the automation when the washing machine is done it will then trigger Amazon's voice assistant to let us know hey the wash is done and it gives us a visual indicator so with this visual indicator a light I picked one that is kind of central location in the house that if we're sitting in the kitchen or the living room or even in our bedroom, we can see it go off and change color to let us know, hey, the wash is done, you can change it over to dryer. So, here's that automation. The washing machine has completed a job. Please unload it. And in this automation, I'm using a singlet power smart plug. The reason why I chose this one is because it's Zigbee based. It can work with directly with home assistance uh, Zigbee antennas. And it works with smart things because I use smart things a lot. Actually, I use smart things as a base for all my Zigbee and Z-Waves because I feel like the antennas are just stronger and it's a lot more stable network. So this device had to be able to read power usage. Uh, I have a lot of other smart plugs. None of them could do it. This was the first one that I purchased aside from the original smart things plug. This was the first one that I purchased outside of that that could do it. Um, and it works great. So the idea behind it is after I had to watch for a while kind of where the washing machine power usage was and it doesn't completely drop to zero. So I couldn't just say when the dryer was at zero, do this automation. I had to look at what its baseline energy draw was. And from that I would say, okay, well, if power drops below this certain level for an ex extended period of time, I think it's like 10 minutes, then trigger the automation. The initial problems I had were, again, it not going to zero. And then during the wash cycle, it would drop below that line whenever it was switching gears or doing it's like another spin cycle, it would drop. So I couldn't just have it as soon as it does that I had to make it for an extended period of time. So once it drops behind that, I'm actually using the integration from the Home Assisted Community Store that allows you to use text-to-speech to make Amazon's voice assistant speak. So it's using that integration and it's making her say whatever I want her to say. And then it triggers one of my LifeX bulbs to turn red. The, that's not just turning red. I actually had to script that because I didn't want it to stay red. 
eventually I wanted to turn to white because it's used for other automations and I noticed that when the other automations would kick off it would make it red instead of being the white that I wanted it to be or whatever it was. So I would just have it script to that and I'll show you that in Home Assistant. Um, so yeah, I also have some, let's see, I think there's Slavonia, Slavonia LED strips in the kitchen that also turn red as well to help give more of like a visual indicator and they are on the same script as well. So in the end it does basically, it doesn't look like much when you see it because it just triggers, she says where word, changes colors and then after a short period of time they all turn back to white. But there's a lot that went into it. So the next automation I want to show you and kind of talk about is when my TV turns on, my Govee lights turn on. This solves the problem of when I first set up my Govee stuff and I'm so excited about it, it'd always be on. Drawing power, lights would be going off and the way Govee works is it has that little camera so if any light in the rest of the house was on and reflecting off the TV, it would read that and create light all over the place. So I wanted to come up with an automation to only have that running when I have my TV on and it was pretty simple. So the integrations I used in this were smart things because my TV is a Samsung TV and it integrates into smart things and then Govee. Specifically a Govee community um, app integration because well Govee doesn't directly integrate with Home Assistant. So the way I would accomplish this was through Home Assistant. The issue with that integration is that it, the API can only be pulled so many times before it just stops working. So I had to kind of tweak that and then get it working. This works great now. Um, it's pretty simple. Like I said, I turn on my TV and all the Govee stuff boots up. Um, what you're seeing the other lights come on in the automation is through the actual Govee app and using DreamView. So the, the uh, TV light is the base station and all those are connected to it. So when it turns on and activates that dream view mode, they all turn on and activate that dream view mode. The only issue is, is when I want to make those lights do something else, such as just be ambient lighting, I have to turn them on in or turn them off of that in the Govee app and make sure they're connected to dream view for whenever that the TV light turns back on. But um, as you can see, there's a lot of lights in, in my room uh, and it looks great. But yeah, simple automation, just TV turns on, Govee lights turn on. TV turns off, Govee lights turn off. And here's that automation in Home Assistant. So the next automation I wanna talk about has been a lifesaver. It started during the lockdowns and COVID when everyone was working from home. Um, it's basically just helping remind me to take out the trash take on time. Take out the trash. Uh, during COVID, during the lockdown, I was working from home. I'd get up at different times. Either I would miss the garbage truck coming by or I'd just completely forget because I just would come to my office and start working. Um, so this helped remind me to do that. The way it does it is whenever I disarm my alarm system, it then triggers Amazon's favorite voice assistant to tell me, hey, take out the trash. And then it opens up the garage all automatically. So I also have a ring sensor in there that whenever it's left open and it detects motion, it, there's a, a beep in the house to remind me, hey, my garage is open. So that would kind of also help me remind, remind me to take out the trash. Um, the integrations I'm using in this are Amazon's voice assistant's text-to-speech in Home Assistant, um, MyQ, and Ring MQTT specifically, not just the regular Ring app, because it only does the cameras, but the MQTT integration brings in the whole entire alarm system and allows Home Assistant to control it. Fourth automation on this list is more of like a uh, quality of life one. I like to listen to music. I like to listen to music when I take a shower. I'm not just standing in there being bored. Um, I used to have to go in there and you know tell Amazon's voice assistant, hey, play music. Um, then I got the idea of using a leak sensor in there that whenever water hits a leak sensor, play music. This wasn't easily done in Amazon's routines because it wouldn't see the, the leak sensor as a trigger. So I had to figure out a way to integrate it into Home Assistant 
and then Home Assistant trigger music through Amazon's routines. Uh, I searched a while for this and I found this great service called Voice Monkey. So what Voice Monkey does, and their team is amazing because up until the recording of this video, it's still free. Um, what it does is basically send out, you can create these little virtual triggers in Amazon routines and they basically trigger routines for you. So I would set this up in Voice Monkey and then I would have, at the time I was having uh, the leak sensor trigger and if this and that, and then trigger the voice monkey and then trigger the routine. However, I couldn't put any conditions on it. I couldn't make it to where if I didn't want to listen to music or my wife didn't want to listen to music, it wouldn't play. So I found it becoming very frustrating at the time where it would just do it. And we'd have to tell it to stop. Or, and my wife was just like, I hate this. Stop it, make it stop. So I turned off the automation for a long time. And then actual notifications came into my life and that was a godsend. So the automation's a little bit more, or a little bit complex, but it uses uh, Amazon routines, it uses an Acara leak sensor, it uses the voice monkey integration, and then it uses the actionable notifications, but in our said that already. Um, so it does something I really don't like it to do is chain automations through different systems, but it works in Home Assistant first, it will trigger the leak sensor to then trigger Alexa actual notifications. She'll ask me a question if I want it to work. If I say no, then that's where the automation ends. If I say yes, it then triggers another automation that then triggers Amazon text-to-speech saying, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. And then triggers that voice monkey service. Now voice monkey then jumps over to Amazon routines and then triggers her to play whatever list on Spotify, which is really cool. So. I love this automation. I think it's one of my more advanced automations and it's something easily done. Like I, I'm not a coder or anything like that. There's plenty of resources out there to learn how to do this. I think my biggest challenge in this automation was getting the voice monkey service to work in Home Assistant because it triggers that. But that's just a little bit of JSON scripting and some YAML, so. I can show you guys how to do that in another video. I think using these advanced automations opens up a huge door to um, making your life that much easier. There's a leak sensor. So this last automation is my creme de la creme. It's my most advanced and my most useful automation I have in my house. It spawned out of my wife right when we were laying down, always asking me to do this, did I check on that, did I do that? Um, and I kind of just made it all one big automation. So it uses your phone, the, it's specifically the sensors that Home Assistant app puts on your phone. It uses Amazon text-to-speech, uses actionable notifications, and then it uses every integration that I have in my house. And here's what it does. When I put my phone on the charger at night, it then triggers an actual notification for Amazon's voice assistant to ask me, hey, do I want to start bedtime lockdown? If I say no, because there are certain periods of when I don't want to do it, maybe I'm getting in bed, but I, we're watching TV or just hanging out and I'm not necessarily going to sleep and I don't want to lock down the house. Um, so that, it will just cut off that automation. If I say yes, then a series of things begin. It will set my alarm, lock both my locks, turn off all the lights, and any switches that might be on. So, sounds simple, but there's a lot that was going on in the background to do that. Uh, but here it is. Would you like for me to begin bedtime lockdown? Yes. Okay. Good night and sleep well. Oh, and darn.
So those are my top five most helpful automations in my house. Now I have a whole bunch of cool ones that are gimmicky and some that are helpful, but not as impressive as those. Um, maybe I'll just give you a tour of every automation one day, just so you guys can see, get some ideas. I always like watching these automation videos myself because there's some cool ones that, that inspire me to make better automations or just these really cool ones. Like you see them on TikTok all the time, the uh, intruder alert ones, and then it locks down the house and plays music. I actually had a really cool one. I don't know if I ever showed it, the video on TikTok or anything like that, but um, those are always cool. However, I get tired of doing voice commands to Amazon's virtual assistant. I like my house to trigger when things happen. Like it, it's more of a smart home where I feel like if I have to remote control something from my phone or tell my voice assistant to do something, then it's not as smart as it should be. And that's kind of the idea behind all these automations is it just does the thing that I want it to do when I do a certain action. Um, if you guys have any great ideas, let me know in the comments. If you found anything informational or inspirational from this video, give me a like, share, uh, and a subscribe if I've earned it. And I'll see you in the next video.